Welcome or welcome back to Robe Trotting. My name is Derek. This is Mike. We're two Americans who have been living in Denmark since 2017 when we first moved to the Nordic countries. And there must be owls in the bog because we haven't done a video like this in a while. Today, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite Nordic idioms and what they actually mean. Wait, what, what, what are we doing? Uh, one more time for Prince Canute. See, we're already doing it. <laughs> One more time for Prince Canute is basically something that you would say if somebody needs something repeated to them a few times. It actually refers to uh, Prince Canute, who was the brother of Frederick the Ninth of Denmark, who is the or was the uncle of Denmark's current queen, Margaretha the Second, and he was famous for needing things repeated a few times. So I've actually heard this one in the wild unfortunately, because maybe I needed something repeated to me. But if somebody just isn't quite understanding something, you could say, one more time for Prince Canute. And it's funny how living here, some of these kind of Scandi sayings have crept into our English as well. I mean, we both speak English the vast, vast majority of the time, but one of the ones that always comes up and I find myself saying at work is that something has fallen between chairs. And I think in the U.S. we would have said that it fell through the cracks instead, but now I find myself being on calls with all American colleagues and saying, well, we don't want that to fall between chairs. Yeah, I have definitely um, have said this in a work setting, uh, working in a Danish office with global clients or global business partners, and somebody says to somebody else that something's going to fall between two chairs and they have no idea what that actually means. I find it funny that like Danes think it's a universal term. I think it's just only in Denmark and Sweden that people actually say yeah. fall between two chairs. In English, we would probably say something fell between the cracks. So let's go through some of our other favorite Nordic sayings that we've discovered over our time here. Yeah, so this one is common all across Scandinavia. And I know that we've used it in a video recently. Let's see if you remember the meaning. If I say that somebody has caught their beard in the letterbox or the mailbox, what do you think it's, that uh, would mean? They're kind of stuck, right? I mean, they're, they're stuck in the mailbox, right? Sort of like they got stuck with, like they almost got caught in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. So I think we talked about this in our video about Storbedere, about Great Prayer Day being uh, eliminated in Denmark. But the politicians may have gotten caught in a bad situation. It's almost like in English how we would say got caught with your pants down. Mm. Yeah, so caught it with your beard in the, the mailbox. You don't want that. Or keep that one in the mind. So let's take our next one from Sweden, where if somebody has the phrase that they've slid in a prawn sandwich, what do you think it means? Slid in on a prawn sandwich. Slid in sandwich. on a prawn sandwich. Yes. Okay, that is so Nordic because prawn sandwiches. Um, uh, somebody slid in on. I would say that like they're coming in hot, like they're <laughs> they're coming in uh, a little aggressive or a little. Uh, no. no, no, not the case okay. at all. But so this is one that's more about somebody who kind of got somewhere without really earning it, kind of maybe uh, like nepotism or something like that. Uh, the phrase I think we'd use in English for this would be if they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth, kind of saying that they slid in a prawn sandwich. Ah, uh, okay, that's old timey. I would say nepo baby, you yeah, because I'm hip and, and trendy. Mm. Yeah. Um, Another one uh, that is good. Let's see if you know the meaning. This is if I'm uh, in Iceland and I want to get revenge, if I want to say like, I'll get revenge on you, I'll say like, I'll find you at where? Where would the volcano, obviously. Mm, okay. The, you would say, I'll find you at the beach. <laughs> oh. So like, if you want to get revenge on somebody, you'll just say like, I'll find you at the beach. <laughs> oh, gosh. The, the famous beaches of Iceland mm -hmm. where you find... All the Everybody. Vikings that are getting revenge on all the other Vikings yeah, that I are guess. there. Yeah, I guess. yeah. But it's probably similar, like, I think in American English and I guess just in English in general, you might say something like, I know where you live. Yeah. <laughs> like, basically, like, I'll get you. If... <laughs> I'll see you on the beach. Yeah. So it's a little bit aggressive. Let's take it down into things you can use in your daily life here in Denmark. So if you want to remember something for later, okay. where do you think you're going to write it? In Denmark, um, yeah, probably on a piece of uh, salty licorice or a herring. I don't know. <laughs> nah, you're going to write it behind your ear. Ah, okay. That makes sense. That's where you're going to put a mental note, right? That's what oh, we okay. would say it in, in English. English should be a mental, be a mental note. note. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, so behind the ear. Yeah, I mean, then honestly, there's a lot of ear phrases here in yeah. Denmark as well. I mean, you can have a, a stick in your ear. Okay, a what? A stick in your ear. I wasn't listening. Uh huh. Exactly. Uh-huh. I know that. I know uh, that. Well one. done. Well yeah. done. Um, and then also, you can have water pouring out of your ears if you're a little bit of a, I guess, a, a gossip. You're talking kind of trash or garbage about people or uh, to okay. people. Yeah, I've heard that one too. Trash talking. You're pouring water out of your ears. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah, okay. A lot of ear ones in in Denmark. Okay, let's take it to Finland for this one. This one I think is kind of obvious when you hear, but if a Finnish person tells you that you are shooting flies with a cannon, <laughs> I assume you're making things more complicated than they need to be. Like you're, I mean, you swat at flies. You don't need to shoot them with a, you know, cannon. Exactly. It's probably like in English you would use the phrase of you're making a mountain out of a molehill, or yeah. like something is overkill. You would basically be shooting flies with a cannon. Pretty clever. I like that That's one. That's a good one. I like that one. Yeah, and the Finns have a lot of fun little phrases. So let's stay in Finland. And what do you think they mean if they're someone's going to go tell you they're going to show you where the chicken pee is from? Um, I think it means that they're oversharing because I don't necessarily want to know that. The Finns are definitely known for oversharing. Yeah. No, that what this means is it means that they're going to show you how something is actually done. It's kind of uh, okay. a, a way to really get into to see how it is. Maybe in English we'd say, uh, I'm going to finally show you how the sausage gets made and kind of get uh, behind the curtain or like, and see how things work. take a look under the hood yeah, or something like that. Sort of I guess thing. there's a few in English and so I'm like, mm-hmm. let me show you that. Now, um, okay, so that's chickens. So in Sweden, if you're talking about chickens or hens more particularly, if you want to say to somebody, it seems like you don't have all of the hens at home, um, probably means that like your chicken coop, you know, wasn't from Ikea, you didn't have an Uh. Allen wrench for it. No, just kidding. So if somebody in Sweden tells you that you don't have all your hens at home, what do you think they're saying to you? I'm guessing it's you're not all there, that you're, yeah. I guess in English you might say you're playing with half a deck or... Yeah, or like you're not not the sharpest knife or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we have a lot of those in English. Like you're not the sharpest knife, you're not the brightest bulb, you're not the... You wrote the short bus. (laughs) We have a lot of... um, Yeah, we need a lot of these in American English. So we have a lot of phrases for dumb people. It's a colorful thing. So while Sweden has their hands here in Denmark, it's all about the ears and the potatoes, obviously. Ah, So what do you think it means if somebody is out there digging up potatoes? I think it just means... (laughs) Just means that they're Danish. <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I don't yeah, know. Potato I, week and potato every. Yeah, 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 I get that. It couldn't yeah. mean anything. No, what it means is that somebody is pushing their own agenda. Uh, if they're out there digging up potatoes, they're, I guess we could say, like, tooting their own horn. Ah. Uh, like, something I have to translate it that way. Okay, yeah. No, that, that, that one makes sense. Okay, from potatoes to Iceland, where I don't know if they are as famous for their potatoes. But if somebody in Iceland tells you that you are jumping onto your own nose, what do you think you're doing? I'm going to meet you at the beach. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, close. close. Uh, really? Well, okay. So if you're jumping onto your own nose, it basically means that like you're quick to anger. Oh. So maybe you're very you, quick to challenge somebody to go to the beach. Maybe you're quick to quick to jumping on your nose in the beach. Yeah. So it basically would be like if somebody in American English, we might say that somebody flies off the handle a lot or somebody's just prone to like overreacting and getting really mad. It would be that they jump onto their own nose. Now, any language only really becomes colorful once you start to introduce some bathroom humor into it. So let's go back to Finland where I, they have a phrase I love, which is that something can vanish like a fart in the Sahara, which means that it just whew, disappeared. In English, you might use something like just vanish like a fart in the wind, but Finns obviously are passionate about tropical deserts. Yeah, yeah, which, you know, if I lived in Finland, I would probably be dreaming of the Sahara various times of the year as well. So I get that one. Uh, Another cool Finnish one is, well, sticking with the bathroom humor, uh, the phrase for diarrhea, they would say that you have poop flying out of you like a flop, like a flock of sparrows. Um, It's a visual. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> a visual? Definitely a visual. Way to go, Finland. I never doubted you for a minute. <laughs> I guess in English, you might say a little bit differently. Oh, like, like hot lava. Hershey squirts. Like <laughs> Hershey squirts. I, I haven't heard that one since I was like 10. Hershey's is a brand of chocolate, so it would be... Use your imagination. Yeah, like the 
milk is squirts or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's okay. Yeah. But keeping with poop in Norway, let's see if you can guess this one here. If somebody gets caught with poop in the drawer, what do you think that means? If somebody pooped in the drawer? Yeah. I've, yeah, I've, I think I've heard that one. Uh, um, oh, it's like um, it's like uh, you screwed up. Like you yeah. made a mistake. Right. Like in English, we right. Like in yeah. English, we would uh, say like you shit the bed. Same sort of thing. Basically, the same basically. scatological humor, combining cultures. Okay, let's leave the bathroom and go back to the farm. So, in American English, we know American slang. If something is the goat, that means it's the greatest of all time. It's a good thing. In Denmark, if something has gone to goat, it's quite the opposite have you heard this one no i don't think i have okay so if something's gone to goat you're basically saying like it's gone to hell it's gone to Mm. so like in american english it would be the equivalent of like that's gone to hell or that's gone to hell in a handbasket something like that so just not a good thing i like that the uh goats are also popular in sweden apparently where Mm -hmm. they have a phrase that you can (laughs) (laughs) yes you can throw a goat's eye at something what do you think it means if i'm going to throw a goat's eye at that oh like um like uh like side eye like mm, no no oh, okay no what it means is that you're going to read through something quickly i think in, in english the equivalent would be probably i'm gonna skim through which honestly also comes from the farm like skimming through milk uh-huh. i would imagine is where that came from okay. so yeah let's kind of give it a quick look give it a give it a goat's eye oh, okay I, okay well giving this one a goat's eye then um <laughs> The next one uh, is Scandinavian all around. Um, this is a phrase that, well, you know, Scandinavians are kind of uh, famously non-confrontational. But if you did want to confront somebody, um, you could say, I have a hen to pluck with you mm-hmm. and basically let them know that uh, you've got an issue and you're going to air it out and bring it right to them. I guess we might say in English, uh, have a bone to pick. Exactly. Kind of the same kind precise. of concept. Uh, precise. Precise. Yes. The other one that I discovered through this that we loved in Denmark and Norway, you can decide that you're going to make cabbage out of something, which generally means that you've just destroyed something. So you can say that, oh, God, we're so hungry. We made cabbage out of that pizza last night. Ah, okay. Well, that's because in Scandinavia, you know, they have a long history of making cabbage of each other uh, in various wars. So, you know, but we're way past that at this point. But... We can maybe make cabbage of this video and say goodbye for now. But let us know which of these idioms you'd like. Add some of your favorites. Correct us if you need to. And if you want to keep watching some of these fun language videos, we have an entire playlist right up here that, uh, or maybe right over here, that you can watch and see more of our love of Nordic languages and some of these fun phrases that we found along the way. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hi. Bye. Bye.